Good morning, folks. We'll begin with the massive plasma filament on the northern hemisphere of the sun. The trailing portions appear to disengage and release out into space, leaving only the Earth-facing portion, which will begin to directly face Earth tonight, but may indeed be far enough north on the sun to evade too much concern. The last 24 hours show anything but a calm surface. Even without major eruptions and ejections, there is still a good bit to see. But first, let's go to the solar wind because the telemetry is on the move this morning, seeing density and speed of the solar plasma rising, throwing a right hook at the electrons in near-Earth space and increasing the activity in Earth's magnetic shield. Something to watch. The coronal holes, dark down south. The pinched opening coming that we discussed yesterday should be visible at the left side, but it may again be too blocked to be relevant. We're seeing some low-level X-ray flashing this morning in 131 angstroms. Nothing major, but the sun's long nap down into B-flare range appears over for the moment. And here's why. Take a look up at the Earth scale. The sunspots emerging from behind it were not there yesterday in present form. Some basic umbras were developing, but now we have a solid morphing active region with mixing potential. That's almost a delta spot up there. Back down to our big group from previous days. Still got good size. And now we can see a positive umbral development at the negative trailing portion. Gamma class is awarded with moderate delta potential today. Also got some new sunspots cresting on the north. The current flaring downturn is only temporary. So when you look at the planets, it reveals one heck of a next two weeks. Venus and Mars will heliocentrically conjoin in a few days. And at the same time, Mercury and the Earth are conjoining. Flare uptick is expected. The Mercury lineup starts a geocentric schedule as well that sees Earth between Jupiter and the Sun at the start of February. And at that same time, Mercury, Venus, and Mars align in the inner system. Largest quakes of the day were in the West Pacific, but the most interesting was in Canada. Even at 4.3, this is well above average and a rare tremor, and given that the USGS took the lowest of all readings given for the event, I'd say she'll claim that top spot. The top article of the day is about a toxic algae bloom off Hong Kong. If unfamiliar, this read can illuminate issues with such blooms worldwide, and the pictures aren't too shabby either. Article is linked for you below. Well, how do you get a temperature delta like this? Those are some odd patterns of change in just 24 hours. It happens because we've got two lows in the U.S. regulating their areas, pulling heat up the leading eastern edge of the systems and cold dripping down across the north and western edges. Together, they make for a winter storm warning in the east tonight. This has already been a nightmare for three days as it's crossing the country, and it's not done yet. Europe. The lone comment for weather today is the convergence hooking down from the North Atlantic low. The storm production here may be rivaled only by the temperature shift on the other side of that convergence. Here's a look at that monsoon season we've been talking about for Northern Australia. How you like them apples? The convergence from yesterday indeed has reached the South Island of New Zealand while that broad air mass collision to the north remains along with a low churning up in the west. All those areas have something to care about tonight and into tomorrow. Over at suspiciousobservers.org, deeper look and fly on the wall are getting really good less than one month into 2015. Things are changing fast and members who have been slacking have some catching up to do. You're seeing the current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, 3.25 in the West. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.